So we recently got a new electric Jeep and I really wanted to have a dog mode like they have on a Tesla to appear on the screen. So as part of this project, that was my end goal to get this dog mode screen uh, running on our Jeep, which is a uh, 4XE, the electric version. And so uh, I'll have a couple updates coming later on with how I actually get this on the screen. However, in doing that, I learned quite a bit about using this ESP32. So right here we have a M5 stack uh, ESP32 called the Atom S3 Lite. Now you can pick up these Atom S3 Lights for only $7.50. So this is a little Arduino. It's an ESP32 Arduino that has a button, it has an LED, it has a reset switch. And I've really enjoyed working with M5 stack products. So the only downfall of this little ESP32 development board is it didn't have a environment sensor, uh, but M5 stack sells this ENV sensor. This is version four. Uh, and it is a, uh, runs on I2C and it plugs directly in using this groove port to the single available port that is here on the back. So by adding this other environment sensor, which is only $5.95, so together we're at about $12, we plug these two together and we can make a really cool Bluetooth low energy environment sensor. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So all we have to do is plug these two together with a little Grove cable and uh, with about 200 lines of Arduino code, we can create our own Bluetooth 4. So starting in Bluetooth version 4, could develop GAT. So a standardized protocol where there's a service and then multiple characteristics underneath that service. And so here in a web browser, what I actually have running is this is connected. We can connect it to a web browser, um, to our sensor and listen to the various uh, attributes, the characteristics. So what we have uh, created is a Bluetooth environment sensor. So we're using uh, that uh, identifier for the overall sensor. And then inside of it, we have temperature, humidity, pressure, and elevation. These uh, environment sensors come with two different chips inside, and we're using uh, one of them to collect the temperature and the humidity, and the other to collect the altitude, as well as the barometric pressure. So with that single chip, we're able to get those four different attributes streaming. Uh, the thing is cool about web Bluetooth is you can read these type of characteristics. So that was my goal for um, the dog mode dashboard in the Jeep that we're going to build is we'll be able to tuck something like this in the glove box and it will stream to my dash the current temperature for what the dog is uh, feeling inside the cab of the car. So I'm gonna give you a link to this BLE environment sensing service that I created. Uh, and it will be a GitHub repository, which is, again, it's 200 lines of code, but it doesn't need to be. I got a lot of comments in here. And I'm handling different things like connections, disconnections, changing the LED light uh, on it. But you can generally see the different attributes that we advertise, uh, the service itself, the environment sensing service, and then the different uh, characteristics, the temperature, the humidity, the pressure, and the elevation. I hunted around the internet for a environment sensing service, uh, like an off the shelf one that I could order, like a little module that would come and I could plug it in and I could listen to it and interpret the data in an open source way and I could not find one. So for again, $15 and then you upload this code to the ESP32, it will create for you a environment sensing service that you can listen to in your own application. For me, it's gonna be a web browser that's gonna to listen to and interpret that code. I'm also gonna include this HTML sample which shows you how to listen to the device. So to get the code on the uh, M5 Atom, all you have to do is plug it in and you're going to go into your Arduino IDE and you're gonna make sure your development board that you've chosen is the Atom and that is the right USB port and you're going to hit upload. That will compile the sketch and it will load it onto the ESP32. I recommend using a slightly longer Grove cable because if this is too close to the ESP32, there can be some residual heat coming off of the dev board. And so you kind of want a little bit of space between 
the environment sensor here as well as the ESP32 back over here. So this is gonna upload for us, which is great. And when it finishes, if you look into the serial monitor here, let me just clear out some of the other transactions, you will notice not a lot of activity. I'm just gonna hit the reset button on the side of this and we can watch it go through its initial steps. So we give it, assign it a device name. So the Bluetooth device name is assigned right there and that's based off the chip ID. We automatically grab that. And it generally is saying that it is ready. So it's ready to be listened to. So to connect to it, we could try using an app like NRF Connect, which is a great app uh, for looking at Bluetooth devices. So if I refresh my NRF Connect, I actually see down here, HVL, BLE. And so there is our uh, Bluetooth um, broadcast service that we advertise. So I could hit connect on this and we can click here, this button to go into the services. So if you give it a second, I'm gonna have to hit connect again here, connect, okay. It will list some of the services that are available. You'll also see that it determined that somebody was listening and it started syncing every five seconds. We are sharing information about the temperature, humidity, pressure, and altitude. Here in NRF, I connect, I can see the different services. So we see elevation, pressure, temperature. So what I'm gonna do is click on this and this will subscribe me to the temperature value. See here that value, F809. So this is the hex value for the temperature and it is updating here. So this phone is right now connected to the GAT service. It's listening uh, and it's getting temperature updates. It's subscribed to those updates. So this app is a great way when you're doing dev work to try to play with or understand how the different services exist. And you can see here in the serial monitor, we're just getting outputs for each time it has sent data. Uh, so what I can do is I can hit disconnect here. So I'm gonna hit disconnect. And you'll see the light turns purple for a second on there, which meant it detected a disconnection. Uh, and you can see here, client, maybe typoed, but disconnected. So the client has disconnected and I am back to uh, being disconnected there. So another way you could connect to our Bluetooth service is from a web browser. So there's this really simple code that is running in HTML. Um, and what we can do is, I'm just gonna hit refresh on the page and we don't have any temperature readings. I'm gonna hit connect to sensor. In HTML now, you can grab a uh, Bluetooth 4, a BLE service. I'm just gonna hit pair. After five seconds or so, we should start to see our first uh, trigger of data. And boom, just like that, our web browser is now picking up um, the temperature, the humidity, the pressure, and the elevation from our simple little Arduino service. The light blinks blue every time it sends a little Bluetooth update. So that's a good sign, meaning that the data is syncing over here to our web browser. So just like that, I mean, it's pretty easy, $15 and 200 lines of code, and you have created your own uh, BLE environment sensing service with four different characteristics that could be listened to via NRF Connect. You could listen to it via a web browser, or potentially an Android app like this, uh, which is gonna go on the Jeep to let people know that my dog is okay. Uh, so anyways, I hope that helps. It was something I was working on and just wanted to share with the Arduino community. And I will give a link to the Uno file as well as the HTML file. So you could try to make something like this at home. Cheers.